We made it. Finally. We made it. God. Wow. Welcome back to the Gen Z Speaks podcast. Hello. We have a very special guest. I keep saying very special guest for every They're guest. They're all special. Bro. They're all, all special. Very In their special. own ways. We're all very, very special. Yeah. Introduce yourself, Kern. My name's Kern Menon. What do you do, Kern? Just <laughs> Kern Menon. <laughs> My name's Kern Menon. Um, I am a writer. I'm a comedian. I'm an actor now. I've been acting in some stuff. Nice. I... What else? Writer, actor, comedian... I'm I'm making I make like films too. I'm trying to filmmaker. Like make, yeah, film. There you go. Filmmaker, <laughs> and um, and I work at a Christian retail startup right now as a day job, and that's not something I want to be my career. That's something I do. Nice. What does yeah. that mean? A Christian retail startup. It means that they make clothes for Christian people, and okay. like they create like, and I help them market them on social media. We find like Christian TikTokers to make these videos with the clothes. Oh, really? Yeah, mm. it's an insane job. And there's a storefront, or it's all online? All online. There oh. is a store in Melrose. There's a space in Melrose where like we work, but yeah, I also haven't done anything for them in like two months. That they barely pay me. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get out of yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. No, man, we all have that. Yeah, right? the day job and then the dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one at this company is Christian. Also, I should clarify. Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you serious? Yeah. Well, we work for a Christian client, like a co- a company, like it's a company. I don't even know if I can say it. I'm, I haven't signed a contract though. They don't even like. I don't even have a contract, so I can probably do whatever I want. I say you just say it. Okay. The company's called Glorify. Okay. They like ha- that's like an app, like a Christian like app. Yeah. So you can get like Bible verses. I'm also like I'm not against any of this. Like this is like fine. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. <laughs> you know, religion, right? Yeah. Religion's fine. I actually love it. Yeah. But. Then they came to this team, which I used to work with this team at like a streetwear company before. It was like making like social media marketing content for the clothes. Yeah. And these people were like, we want to start releasing clothes, Christian clothes for, for our Christian audience. Mm-hmm. And we want you guys to help us make it. And so there was like a six month period where like we were just like mm-hmm. literally creating clothes on AI and just like mar- like testing them on social media to see like which ones got the most clicks. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shoot. And that's what I was like creating AI clothes with like fake models who didn't exist. And then like... And seeing which ones to make. Yeah, seeing which ones got oh, the most clicks. Oh, that's clever. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, a cool wow, model. Yeah. It's just like the intersection of like mm-hmm. people's faith and then just like making money off of yeah. that is like so uh, ethically yeah. blurry. Not sound. It's not, yeah, it's not very sound. sound. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nobody who works at the company is Christian. That's wild. That is insane. The head guy's Jewish. <laughs> <That's> what? <laughs> of our team. And then, like, he's, like, the main, like, liaison. So, like, the Christian is, like, investors are Christian. And they'll come, like, every once in a while. We'll, like, meet these, like, CEO yeah. people. And I'm like, okay, you guys are, like, you know what you're doing. <laughs> and then, like, the head guy is Jewish. And then, like, Indian guy is Hindu guy. I mean, <laughs> He's like, has been my boss at like three different jobs, and I'm like, why do I need to just start applying for actual job? Because now I just like hit him up whenever I don't have a job, and he's like, ah, I got something for you, I got something for you. It's like always like he plug. gets shadier and shadier as, as it goes uh, as years go by. I'm like, he just uh. how did you find this guy? I just worked. So actually, it was like my old, I have an older half brother who worked at Facebook with him, and then when I like okay. after my freshman year of college. He was like, I was like, I'm looking for a job in something entertainment related because my major was neuroscience when I came into college okay, the first yeah. year. So I was like, I don't want to do neuroscience stuff. I want to do entertainment. I need a big like rebrand of myself. How yeah. can I do anything related to entertainment? And then my older brother was like, there's this guy. You should meet him. He's working at a startup right now mm. for, it was like another like startup. It was like an app, to, and infotainment. That was some weird. Infowars? In- no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> No, but that would have been better, honestly. Though <laughs> it was like a more working for Alex Jones. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I think at this point I could probably handle working for Alex Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones. Maybe like, I'm buying bankruptcy right now. I think. Um, really? Yeah. Because okay. he has to pay back. I think the the so remember the Sandy Hook shooting that happened in the preschool. Mm. Like oh yeah, he said that didn't happen or something. Right? And they sued him, the parents of the children. Yeah. And I think he has to pay five hundred million dollars. <laughs> what? Which he doesn't have, so he's liquidating everything. Something along those lines. Ooh, that's like, wow. Something like that. I might be wrong, but it's a very big figure. And he's not he rich got... off of like what he's done. Like he's not. Not like... a half a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of money. That's too. a lot of money. <laughs> to be a conspiracy theorist and make yeah. that much money. <laughs> he, he has like, a huge following. Yeah, he, he has a huge following. But what does he make his money off? Like selling pills and stuff. Like, right? What? Yeah. Is that what he does? I honestly have no idea. How he... I'm I'm sure there's sponsors for crazy yeah. stuff like that, right? Yeah. So sponsors, sure sponsors, sponsors, of course, yes. Yeah, and then, 
Yeah, I mean, he has a pretty big network too, right? So yeah. I'm sure they feed him info to say and mm-hmm. get some money off of the info. But that's speculation. Know. I don't know anything about Alex Jones, but well, that's, that's a war. I out once there. Was with Alex Jones actually? What? Yeah, in Sacramento. What? Yeah, like with him, like, like ne- with him, like in a personal, intimate space. Yeah, bro, I actually went with him to. Uh, you went. You went with him Alex? somewhere. Yeah, he was like, "Come with me." <laughs> like, no, 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 it was like a meet and greet. Yeah, kind of like that. It was like a meet and oh, greet. Oh, okay. And then he was like, "Hey, do you want to go to the Bohemian Grove?" And I was like, "Where is this?" He was like, "It's actually." It was actually like uh, two miles away, three miles away, something like that. Was this and that was like, like okay. secret club thing? Yes. Whoa. Exactly. Whoa. Nobody was there. Wait, Gulls and Bones? No, no. It's no, called no. the Bohemian Grove. It's like a one of those lodges. Yeah. Or it's like one of those like like George. Bo- it's like it, frats for adults, basically. Yeah, like. it was like in the woods. George Bush has like notably been up there giving a speech. Yeah, yeah. Clintons yeah, yeah. have been there. Kennedys, and then he showed me like where about it is. He showed. He didn't let you in, obviously. Or you uh, were you well, inside? Wait. Because it's like in the woods, yeah. yeah so like yeah. we had to, we just walked through the woods, kind of. Like we parked and then we walked through the woods. It was kind of weird, but <laughs> you're making this up. No <laughs> way. No way. <laughs> no way. No <laughs> way. You would have told me first of all. <laughs> Second of all, you don't want to just walk in with Alex Jones and go to the woods. <laughs> That's, I cannot believe He that. is an actor, so. I was with you the whole way. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really ask in, uh, many important logistical questions. Like, why, Like you were you just walking parked? in the woods. It, yeah. It, it was like, basically like a vlog, Alex Jones and Matt. Mm, mm. Yeah. yeah, a popular show that's online. <laughs> I could check out right now. No, I'm totally joking. Yeah, okay. Never met Alex Jones. Okay. Doesn't know I exist. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. After this one, maybe. After this. He'll be like, oh, maybe I will take him to the Bohemian Grove. <laughs> I'll pick you up tonight. <laughs> to the woods. <laughs> to the woods. I met this. I think this might be the same thing, but my girlfriend worked as an executive assistant for like one month to this like insane person. Okay. Actually, maybe I shouldn't say insane. Maybe he's a very powerful man. But yeah. He uh, is like in his 30s and he's like a VC and he's like multimillionaire. Okay. And he was like, he just revealed to her at some point that he's like the youngest member of I think this this club of Bohemian Grove. It's like some club in the woods where like they go out like uh-huh. once every four years, and they do like and it's like all got dudes yeah, and they yeah. put on a play, like but it's like Supreme Court justices yeah yeah and like multi billionaires and they all just hang out and there's like women who serve them and they're just like they can say the, the most objectifying things they want uh-huh. about like any of the staff <laughs> and it's just like that's like the deal real and this is your sister my girlfriend your <laughs> what girlfriend. sister what uh, I, I don't that. <laughs> yeah but anyway, she just worked for him and why would he reveal that to your girlfriend he's the kind of guy who's like he's the kind of guy who like pull you aside and be like listen what i'm, what I'm about to tell you i've told to only my mother and my like dog <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's like he makes you feel like you're like oh shit like important <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly i don't okay. know it might not even be true <laughs> but, well that's kind of funny i mean that's I mean, that's hilarious that's kind of yeah. funny yeah, yeah. classic what, ella jones what made you want to switch from neuroscience from to neuroscience. entertainment uh i didn't even want to do neuroscience but mm. i did like so my major i mean i went to a stem high school which was okay. in new jersey called high technology high school High technology high school. That's called high, high tech. tech. High tech. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, it's um, actually a high school. It's name. actually a, it's actually the name of a high school. Our competitor <laughs> school was called Biotech. And Biotech yeah, was the other rival. High the rival high school. They were like, and our mascot was the Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Their mascot. No, was. our mascot. Your mascot Their was Adam. like the double helix or something. I don't know. But we had like. We didn't have any sports teams. We really had. We had a chess team. It was like a very small like right. magnet school that you had to like yeah. apply to in the county and there were five vocational schools in the county that you could apply to so huh. it's like high tech biotech uh <laughs> allied health which was like the medicine one yeah. Mar- there was a marine academy one where everyone wore like the the rotc drip like really yeah and then co- one called communications which i don't know what they did there i think it was like journalism vocation. so eighth grade current was like hey i need to get to get into high tech yeah <laughs> that's literally it i got a pretty good score too i there was like go. good at math and science yeah. in like middle school and i couldn't think of anything better to do and my yeah. parents were like both in stem and they're like go go that way so it was totally guided then it was very guided yeah. and then in that school it was like being like a uh, kind of like big fish from a small pot like you, you, I thought I was smart, and then I got to the school, and everyone was like a genius. And I was like, 
these oh, really? like it was like meeting people where I was like, oh, you are meant to do math. Like you were born to do this. Mm. Oh shoot! I am not. I mean, I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, if I really applied myself, of course. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of like just competition. Not naturally wasn't for you. Yeah, it's just like I loved. I like getting analytical about things. Uh-huh. But now I think that's what makes me a good like writer. Is like I like looking at how things work. Mm-hmm. Like it was like engine. Our thing was engineering, so yeah. we like had to build a product in our like senior year. We had to do like a research project in sophomore year. Oh, that's cool. So it was cool. Yeah. It was cool. It taught me a lot about science yeah and how the different things work but at the end i was like i think i like the humanities classes here more than the other classes so, so the mascot of your high school was an at was an atom yeah Adam. it was like a jo- it was like everyone knew it was a joke kind of it was like we we just couldn't really think we couldn't do better than that so <laughs> we were like ah, ha, that's funny but also yeah it is the atom and yeah. so what do you guys what, what did you guys call yourselves like our mascot Adams? was gladiators so oh we were gladiators what, were you uh, a thomas sir no we were like the adams the <laughs> Adam. we were all go adams the adams <laughs> family it was all kind of a joke because we never had sports games to go to just chess just games like, roll yeah. adams we wouldn't even go to the chess game it would have been fun if we all pulled up to like to chess games and like we're super yeah like in it's queen's a, gambit uh, or something where they have like a yeah. stadium of people watching <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, that's yeah. wild bro you yeah. only had a chess team that's it and it was like it wasn't even like we followed what they were doing like they just went and beat people and just came back was it social your high school or no was it was, was it social? social like where people oh, my grade was my grade had a sense of humor which i'm very thankful for okay. and so we were like okay now this like yeah everything is for college everything is competitive but let's also have fun and mm. have a lot of jokes with the teachers and mm. Other cl- grades, it was like you're talking to like a door. Like it was like there was, some of them were just like <laughs> they did not give a shit about talking to you. They were like just all they cared about was like what? I don't know, maybe it's like it's an exaggeration. Everyone uh, was a very nice person. Yeah, yeah. But some people were very difficult to get through to. Okay. There were a lot of people who were just like locked the fuck in. <laughs> like, <laughs> and everyone yeah. was trying to get on like a good club like that would look good for their resume. Like mm-hmm. the whole point of that school was college. Right. Which I know there's a lot of prep schools like this, but this was like minus the resources. Like we didn't really right. have great guidance counselors. It was just like you are smart, you're gonna get come here, be smarter, and then you're gonna get into an Ivy League school. And that was like and wow. like half my grade got into like Ivy Leagues or like thought like MIT. What was your class size? Seventy. Se- oh. Seventy kids. That's yeah. Something, bro. Yeah. Dang. See, everybody knew everybody. Yeah, yeah. Immediately. It was uh not everyone was super close with everybody, but like everyone was like a meme was... by the end. <laughs> everyone had memes around them because they were just like, you know That was a yearbook photo, just memes it, of yeah, people. Was, yeah. Even was... the yearbook club was like run by my friend. So like my friend would just like take would just pull people aside and get them to pose in weird ways. Like it was all a joke at the end of the day. Was there a dating culture? There was. There was. There was. But it was like so weird. It yeah, was like sure, bro. Seventy yeah. people. Seventy people. Like it only really started to ha like I think two people like paired off in like freshman year and that was like oh but that was because they were from the same town because it was like county mm. school so people would take the buses in from different towns okay and there were two towns that fed like half the grade which was like my town and this other town oh, okay we like had a lot of people like get in because we just had a good public school system gotcha um but then otherwise they take the top exam score from any town that applies and then they go down the list of just scores that was how, wow. Yeah. You know, so it it was like a varied thing, but then some schools would just have a lot of the top scores. So like my town, Homedale, gotcha. twenty people got in from my town. Fifteen got in from this other town called Marlboro, oh, and so they were like fifty percent was from yeah. T- wow. Yeah. What was the ethnic demographics of it this was like, high school? And this has been talked about a lot. This was, <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. It was pretty much. It was like Asian, Indian, white. It was like it was like surprisingly, it was like half white. Maybe when I checked, but it was. And some grades, I think it was definitely less than half white. It was like Asian, mostly Asian, yeah. some brown. You would think there'd be more brown. But yeah. It was actually like, my grade had like six brown. Is that true? Like six or six brown guys. We had like, maybe like, it was like, okay, maybe like 10 brown people out of a group of seven. Ten so out of seven. It was like, yeah. Wow. Really male dominated at school? No, it was like half and half. Half and half? Yeah. 
That's so was good. everybody kind of dating everybody, and you're like, your buddies are dating, like, your exes and shit? Well, okay, I mean, you're, that's assuming that people have, like, the guts to actually, like, yeah, to do, yeah. yeah like, your, kids in high school, people yeah. are so, this is, like, the uh, most awkward people from all middle <laughs> okay, schools okay. coming together. Yeah. The elites, yeah, the, the elites of the awkward. <laughs> the elites of the awkward. Then the cool kids were, like, the people who played sports and didn't care as much about their academics. It was, like, it's one table at lunch, like, ten people who... All white kids. <laughs> the, all the white kids still managed to still be the cool kids because they just like didn't work as hard as everybody, and that was considered cool. Like that, or maybe they worked hard, but they were just like, ah, we care about sports, and everyone was like, oh, that's like cool. clubs because club sports, right? Cl- yeah, like or um, they like they you could play for your home high school. Oh, so gotcha. you could take the bus what? back after school yeah. to your home high school, where you would have gone if you didn't get into the school, Interesting. and you could play sports. Them. That is a trip. Yeah, I've never heard and there were kids who that. actually did that. And yeah, there were. Yeah, they took the bus back. Yeah, there was one guy named Tim Zhao who was really good at basketball from my town. He's like my neighbor, but he he would go. He was pretty good at that. Oh. And those people were able to maintain relationships with like both schools mm. and look like, look cool. Mm. Like some people could pull it off, but other people it was like if you're coming to high tech, you're accepting that that life, you know. <laughs> You're never gonna make it in that circle. No, at 14, you're accepting the fact. Yeah, I I was like obsessed with like social dynamics and like who is cool and. Oh yeah. I, in middle school, I was just like, I was like, I was happy, but I realized like, at four years at this, in four more years with these people, it was like a way bigger school and way more like ratchet and just like pe- like. Okay. It was like New Jersey. It was like a Jersey kind of high like high school like just a lot of like drama i recently like hung out with some of those guys again who i used to be like very intimidated by like Mm. randomly ended up at a bar with like this group of the jock kids who i like yeah barely like could say a word to in like middle school and like some of them were turned out pretty nice some i'm like wow you were like are exactly what i remember but all of them were different but yeah it was like a crazy it was like a crazy like trip back to like what uh Dang, so you realize when you're like in middle school with these guys, you're like, this isn't my crowd. I need to kind of go towards something. Yeah, because I was a very sensitive kid. Like, oh, you're very sensitive. I was very sensitive and I was very studious and I liked reading books, you know. Mm. And I feel like that kind of stuff, it wasn't like I got bullied. I, I got bullied like one time. Mm-hmm. But I, I managed to stay out of it for the yeah. most part by like being likable or like funny. But it was like, I could just tell we were like, not. It was this wasn't it. Like my group, my friend group was like pretty much all the Asian kids. <laughs> Like, okay. it was, like, Asian and Indian kids, and, like, 20 of us just left, like, to go to this other school together. Oh, all of you guys left to that yeah. school? Yeah. So we all, so oh, I still so had cool. my friends. Yeah, you yeah. friends. It was, like, a good deal, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Nice. I don't, what is it about, like, being in that middle school age where the primary objective of life seems to be to the coolest person? Yeah. Like, to be the coolest person, know the coolest people. I know. And as you grow older, you're like, what was I doing? Like, I, I spent know. so much time thinking about, I'm not cool, I suck, and all these kids are better. I know. And now you look back in hindsight, and you're like, what the hell well, was yeah, I doing? Why were you what I was, like, aspiring to yeah. be? Yeah. Like, that was what happened when I saw these guys at mm-hmm. this bar. Like, I hung out. I was just meeting one guy. It was one brown friend who stayed mm. at Homedale High School. And he's, like, a good guy. He's also, like, a jock. So, like, he kind of fit in with... Those guys, he found yeah. his place in that, like, circle of, like, white jock, cool kids, you know. Um, and then I went to, I went off to high tech. But then, <laughs> but I've stayed in touch with him, and I saw him recently, and, like, he, he was like, bro, you're doing comedy now. Like, people want to come to the show. Like, I had a show, and then he was like, bro, come to the bar after. Like, people want to say hi to you. And I was like, what? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, and then I showed up. I was like, damn, I just did. I was in the new, I did the New York Comedy Festival, the right. comics to watch. Oh, sweet. So I was like, fuck yeah, I've made it, like. <laughs> These guys don't have, like, shit on me anymore. I'm a comic to watch, motherfucker. And then I showed up to this bar, and I saw these, like, six or seven dudes who, like, looked like I could recognize who all of them were. Yeah. And I was, like, everything just left my body. I was, like, I was that kid again. I was, like, really? I was so terrified. still have that, yeah. Uh, Because a lot of my, like, building my confidence was not done in an or It was done in a very, like, cover up who you were kind of way. It was like, mm-hmm. in high school, it was like, I got to just pretend that that middle school self never happened, which was, a, I mean, it couldn't pretend, mm-hmm. but I was building it up. Then once I got to college, it was like, complete redefine yourself. Like, be talkative, be like, confident, make yeah. jokes like every five seconds. Um, I think maybe I overdid it a little bit, but it mm-hmm. definitely was a way of me like, redefining yourself. Redefining. But yeah. it's not like that other kid like, left. It was right. still, there. still there. I was just like, trying to layer on a lot of shit on top. Interesting. There, there's, I feel like the reason why a lot of kids in middle school want to be the cool kid 
is because they see the cool kid getting all the appreciation. They see him getting the attention. Yeah. And as kids, you also want to be admired and yeah. get attention and feel heard. Yeah. So we all have this want to be the cool kid because that's yeah. what's like, that's what's valued by society, and we want to be valued. Yeah. But it's interesting how we. As we get older, we try to hide those vulnerable parts of our personality. And we're like, no, that never happened. I was always the person that I am right now. Yeah. So it can be a trip to, like, really appreciate all the different facets of your personality yeah. and how they add up to whatever you are in your life today. Yeah. It, it's It's hard to admit that because i similar to you like when i was in middle school i came from pakistan another different country yeah and like i spent like the first couple months just figuring out like where am i and then the next year was like okay i am at this place i accepted the fact that i immigrated yeah. and now i have to be the guy and i ended up being the loner like in eighth grade bro i talked to like nobody really nobody like a couple i had two friends uh -huh. and we'd all hang out at the library like every day yeah. almost drink snack and lunch and That's i was like just a classic american story yeah like, in a way like yeah yeah, yeah. Kids who like hang out in the library yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and then i changed in high school and then i changed in college and i feel like i'm changed now yeah yeah damn so you didn't talk to anybody i did i did talk but i was always just hanging out with the same two dudes yeah in middle school are you still yeah. homies with them no 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 have yeah. you ever like said what's up at, ever no we went to high school together and like i don't oh, know God. we just drifted apart and things just happened since high school i haven't talked in like six years to these guys yeah who, like right now who like which past self do you feel the most similar to which past self that's a yeah. good question you too Ooh. you go first at the moment right now i think i've started getting back in touch with like who i was at the end of high school beginning of college mm, okay which like that moment where i decided to really change myself i went i've now gone it's been like five years it's been six years actually almost since i because i did that gap year it's mm -hmm. been six years since i graduated college or high, high school high school high school yeah and i'm starting to remember like i had like this other kind of confidence back then it like was different it was definitely weirder. Yeah. I was a weirder person, but I was being more myself. Yeah. And I feel like now I'm coming back to that because I've started, say, like, cutting off ties with certain people who were making me be... How, how do I say this? Like, when I got to college, my goal was to be friends with literally everybody and be the type of person who could be friends with literally everybody. And that meant, high, like, really just, like, I don't know, like filtering myself through a lot of different mm. filters. Yeah, and More now like, I'm yeah, now I'm just removing some of those filters because I'm like I actually don't need to be friends with those people or those people or those people <laughs> or those yeah. people or those people. <laughs> no, it's totally fair. Yeah, so I feel like I'm coming back cool. in a way, but also maintaining some of the who I've become. Like mm. I don't know, it's so weird to change. I don't know. It's like an evolution, right? Yeah, it's going up and then back down, and then you're like yeah, yeah. You go. You go. I'm still thinking. So, okay. okay, I think for me, I think I'm going back to how I was like the second year of college. Second year the of The second year of college, yeah. Because second year of college, half of it was in person, half of it was online. And I think I was more reflective of what's happening as opposed to like my junior and senior years where I felt like I was more, I don't know, just thinking about stuff that wasn't really that important you know okay um but i think i'm not at the place where i'm okay with all my past selves like i'm still it's i'm still on that journey like yeah. i don't think i've touched a path or touched a milestone in my personal life where i'm like you know what i'm, I'm cool with being the loner kid in eighth grade i'm cool mm. with being that guy i'm cool with trying to be in like the frat life of usc i'm cool with that you know yeah. like i don't know it's i think it's a process where everybody meets or accepts their past selves in their own specific time your second year was was frat right second year no my um, well yeah the second year yeah so, yeah so you feel like more in touch no, with no 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 like more like i mean like second semester of my sophomore year okay yeah wait when, yeah. when did you start college what year 2019 okay or 2018 after i graduated high school 2018 okay yeah. so you, we all graduated high school 2018 2018? yeah right yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah. cool yeah, that's so a 2018. That's 2018. <laughs> <laughs> sophomore COVID. Yeah, yeah. Soph sophomore year. So you felt like you were hitting, like you were doing well. Sophomore year. Second semester. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even when I was like, 
at home, I felt good. Yeah, I didn't feel bad. The first two months. What do you mean didn't feel bad or you felt good? What does that mean? I mean, like, I felt like I had a clearer purpose in life. Like, I was, I knew what I wanted to do. Okay. I was more focused. So, I feel that right now. That's what I'm okay. saying. You feel more Where fulfilled. I feel like in my third and fourth year of college, I was like, whoa, hold on a second. I was like, I don't know where this is going. You know really? what I'm saying? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like I've had like a kind of opposite path than you guys. I think in high school... I was more goofy and like kind of like silly would like talk a lot. And then I remember when I was going to college, I was like, I don't want to talk to anybody here. I just want to like kick ass and just run through. And so I wouldn't talk to anybody really. Um, well, no, that's 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 a lie. I had like I had, I had a few friends, quite a few friends, but uh, I just wouldn't like mess around or goof. I took like I finished in three years of college, so I was really just trying to just hustle my ass through it. Um, and then when COVID hit, that not when it hit, but that semester, I'm like what am I doing? Like, I, something didn't feel right. Like, cause I was just more serious. I was trying to be like, not mysterious, but like the guy that nobody really knows, I guess, which is never, which is never me. You want to be James Bond in college? <laughs> yeah, I guess I want, to, I want to be James Bond in college. I have done that for like, like, the mic. <laughs> That's exactly what I would do, bro. Did you go to Laverne? <laughs> you must have seen me, bro, doing that. No, no. Did you go to the um, Bohemian Grove? I did, a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> After Alex Jones took me, I yeah. I went again. But no, like serious, I I felt like I just didn't want to. I don't know why. I honestly, I think back, I don't know why I was like that. I just didn't want to um like bring any attention to myself or anything like that. And I just wanted to just kind of hustle through. And then I realized, like, this is retarded. Like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And so, like, that changed. And then I'm back to my normal self, like, as always. But, yeah. You had, like, a switch where you just decided to stop doing that? And then... Yeah, I was just like, this is not me. And I just felt uncomfortable being that person. Because naturally, I goof off. I mean, I mess, mess around a lot. I'm always joking. And I just, yeah, dude. And so I just decided, I was like, this is not me. Why am I doing this? Why do I care that much? And so I just stopped. But that that's the only time I think I've ever, like, switched a personality. But it's a weird thing. That, I mean, Laverne, it was only, like, 45 minutes from home. So I would come home on the weekends. But home, I'd be my natural, normal self. But there, I just, like, kind of just, like, locked in. Mm. Yeah. That's what, the only time I've ever been like that. But, yeah. What was the point in your life where you realized you wanted to do comedy? Was there, like, an epiphany yeah. you had? Was it a series of moments? How was that process? It, it was more like a quiet, like kind of like revving myself up to do it like in hi high school I was, even in middle school I was like kind of like a clown or like I did a little I did I like to joke a lot and I liked when my yeah. jokes did well in like class and stuff and I was like always trying to like monitor and I liked using humor as a way to like mm. I don't know just like get feel like com more comfortable in a room yeah. and then in high school we would do these like Spanish projects like where you made videos have you, you ever do those like Spanish was the only place where we were like we were encouraged to make like video assignments like really? and you just had to like keep like include a certain amount of vocab words and then the video could be whatever you wanted and so we would just make like these really funny like crazy videos <laughs> and I would and like my friends and I would go like unnecessarily hard on them and then we had like <laughs> yeah, just do like whatever we want like there was one where Snoop Dogg was like stuck in a well <laughs> yeah, no, like, <laughs> El Agujero de Snoop <laughs> the hole of Snoop that's what it was called. <laughs> Um, and then we had a film, uh, like a, called Film Fest? Yeah, it was called Film Fest, but it was mm. like, every grade made a film, mm. and it was, again, there were like requirements, and then like, that was fun, and then, even, in like, high school, I started like, in my notes app, like, writing down things, if I ever tried stand up, this is what I would do. Oh, okay. Um, and then, in my freshman year of college, I got into, oh, I did my like, pa we got a passion project in senior year of high school, which could be on anything you want. Yeah. And uh, mine was like, I'm going to answer the question, like, what makes something funny? Which was like a very, like, vague question. But it was basically an excuse to just watch a lot of Key and Peele. I just watched a lot of Key and Peele. And, like, I analyzed them and I learned about, like, I learned terms, like, all these terms, like, premise, button, like, heightening. There's, like, sketch writing terms, like, that you can apply to a lot of sketches. And then later I got into a sketch group at USC in my, like, first semester. And then that, like, took off my trajectory of like just being around comedy people i was really hoping i could like even if i did neuroscience be yeah. around comedy people so mm. i did that and then i started stand up my second semester freshman year in the class that usc offers and that was like a cool way of like knowing that i was like learning 
some of the basics I needed. Nice. Yeah. So it's based on this project of analyzing what makes something funny. Where you found your passion for comedy? I think I already had a passion. Mm. I think like I've it's something I've like it's like a cheat code I've used in the like throughout my life, which is like just repurpose a school assignments to like let me explore things I'm actually interested in. And I wanted an excuse to focus some time on comedy. Mm. And if I could make it something that school was requiring of me, then I didn't feel guilty doing it. Mm. Otherwise I just felt guilty pursuing anything that I was passionate about because I was like I felt guilty I felt guilty because I felt like I was that was intention with like my STEM career that my parents were like hoping I would be oh, not that they were going to force me but it yeah. was like they were really hoping that mm. for me and I had not revealed to them that I was really into like writing and um, comedy even though like if they look there's like a there was like a track record of like I won like an English award in like 8th grade but like when I finally told them in like end of high school, like I think I want to do something film related. They're like, "Where has this been?" They're like, "What?" Where All of been? a sudden, fam, they're oh, like, yeah. "What?" <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's like I feel like that's why, man. It's so important for somebody as a young kid to just feel fine doing what it is that they really love. Because if you hide that part of your personality, like it becomes like a defense mechanism. It, it kind of becomes like. Am I really supposed to be doing this? And I feel like that hinders or that filters your original natural talent. I'm yeah. lucky you like you're lucky you found that in college and you pursued it. Yeah, I'm really really lucky I found I got into a group that was just like we're going to meet, we're going to do a show every semester like just do it. And then I just that let me like I could even tell my parents like I'm in a club, sorry, I got to do this for my club. Like <laughs> yeah. Not that they were like telling me not to. I think they also really appreciate comedy and and I know they're my dad's very, very they're both very funny. So they're like they love good art. They just, like, get scared when you say you're going to try to make a living off of it. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to try to make a living off of it. I'm just going to, like, do it as yeah. well as all the other stuff. And I'm going to make it as good as I possibly can. And mm. after, like, a year or two, I was like... By the, that's why I really hated that COVID happened because I was really hitting my stride mm. uh, right comedically. Like, I was doing shows. My sketches were getting into our... Like, I was writing solo sketches that were getting into our sketch shows, and they were, like, at least my favorites, or, like, my roommates would be like, that was my favorite. Like, I wrote that. And, like, mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, but then COVID ended up being good for me, actually, in terms of, like, that was, uh, then I started making internet sketches, and that was, like, the biggest thing that ever happened. So. Yeah, he made sketches, like, got, like, millions of views on TikTok, yeah. Instagram. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Check it out, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, when you told your, I'm just curious, when yeah. you told your parents, like, hey, I'm going to pursue like comedy how do they react or not they, comedy but like the arts the arts they knew, they first of all you like, sat them down you're like no yeah it was kind of like a talk it was <laughs> let me give you the talk yeah, mama, like, mama. <laughs> yeah. i'm an artist like, like, coming out to them it was it how, i think it was like a series of like i can't really i can't really remember i think it was like it definitely felt to me at the time like it was like the most serious thing in the world like bring to them like, this is like very important yeah i need you to still accept me as i am but i like think i want to like change majors to like film or something related to film going to usc that was another thing i got into usc and i got into like emory and usc is in los angeles and mm -hmm. i was like i also got into rutgers in new jersey so i had a lot of options i told them i was choosing usc because they had given me half off but really, which was true, but also I was like, you know, hopefully I'll meet some creative entertainment uh, people. Yeah. So it was like a lot of like backdoor stuff that I was doing. <laughs> I'm sure I could have just told them, but I think I, I think maybe I thought it was more dramatic than it had to be. Okay. But I don't want to gaslight myself. I think they also did like really think I was going to be homeless if I did like art. Or so anyway, I told, them, <laughs> I told them on a vacation, I think. I was like, we were like Athens. Okay. And at, like a restaurant. Athens, like, Greece? Damn. Greece, yeah. And like the <laughs> spring break of some of uh senior year of high school and i was like i think at like a restaurant yeah i was just like i oh by the way <laughs> and then i just remember like a super sad walk from the restaurant to the hotel where i think they were just like letting me not letting me have it but they were like you like i don't understand <laughs> like, like <laughs> i don't get it like what like it's not going to work. Like, all these... Then they started sending me studies. Like, like they started sending me articles about, like, jobs and how much money they make. And you're going to, like... They're just, like... It was so, like, objective to them. I think they're just... They're now looking back, like, they're, now they've backed off. But yeah. they were just very scared. Right. Mm. It's understandable. Yeah. It's not like they had bad intention. Dude, these stories always interest me because it's, like... One day we're going to be in this position, right? And it's, yeah. like, we can look back at what our parents would say or do and... 
I don't know, dude. It always trips me out hearing these types of stories and like what the parents say or do in, in the situation. Yeah. It is weird. It's weird. Yeah. And my parents are super supportive. They're not like very traditional parents. Like they they've encouraged us to do art from like a very very young age. Oh, okay. And they like care. Like I was taking music like, piano classes when I was like five years old, which was, and like I still play piano. Right? It's like a really nice outlet for me. Nice. Uh, so I'm very thankful. It was just like maybe they didn't expect that to like catch on in the way it did. They were just like, mm. this is gonna be an outlet for yeah. you. For when you get depressed doing medicine, <laughs> that was, that was like this is gonna be my thing. Be my thing. These things. Dang, that is crazy, man. I literally have a bit on this. I'm like, yeah, I, 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 I came out to my parents and like yeah. I told them every single thing about myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's. Was, I think, how did your parents react? My, I, I have, I the first thing they said was. I mean, my mom was different, and my dad was different. Okay. Um, my mom in the beginning was surprisingly like, "Oh yeah, like if if she told me whatever it is you pursue, Ibrahim, you're gonna be great at, so yeah. do yeah. it." And then like I showed her a film I made, and she was like, "What is this?" She was like, "I didn't know you were actually like I thought it was just gonna be a hobby or something." And she yeah. was like, "Whoa." Oh, okay. So, and my dad, I think the reason why a lot of like immigrant parents, and especially brown parents, are cautious of their kids going into the arts is because they haven't seen that in their own families they have they don't like my family there's not a single artist that mm. that nobody makes a living off of art everybody yeah. either is in stem or some job, job. that has to do with the corporations or you know what i mean is saying like with with it as a hobby yeah yeah like my mom loves to paint my mom is yeah. a great painter there's always there's all these people in my family that have the art in them it's yeah. just they haven't monetized it yeah and like if you're the first person in your family trying to monetize art it's always going to be hard because no one's ever done it right. yeah. and that goes with even like trying to be i don't know like a lawyer in a family of basketball players no one's ever done it they're like are you sure you want to be a yeah. lawyer i mean you're yeah. six foot five you can just yeah. play in the nba it'll be easier yeah but they're like nah you know i, I want to be a lawyer i want to be in front of a judge yeah. so i think that's why it's because they haven't seen in their own family and in America, especially as an immigrant, you have the hustle mentality where, like, you're scared of going back to where you started. Like, especially for my family, like, we started at the very bottom. Like, we were on welfare. And so I think the fear is to not go to that rock bottom self. Because, like, the art, when you pursue it, it's very insecure profession where nothing is ever guaranteed. Even if you're, like, huge, your next paycheck isn't guaranteed. Even if you're like the biggest artist, you can get canceled and yeah. lose everything, yeah. you know? So like, it's a very testy profession. And that's why your parents are probably sending, sending you all those studies, yeah. you know, on, they, on they that. Wanted, like, a clear, they yeah. knew that what they did, there was a clear path. Like, you just do this, this, and this. You're going to make this amount of money. You'll be good. They did it. It was very hard, but they did it. It was very hard, but they did it. And now, um, yeah, they're just insecure about or upset that i was choosing something that was like unstable and you don't know where your next job is going to come from and stuff like that i think yeah. our parents want us to know that what we're choosing is not going to be like the glitz and glam so like i feel like they want us to be aware that it's going to be hard yeah because a lot of people go into it wanting to be like the next big thing or like have the next big film or comedy special and all of this takes like so many years if not decades to yeah. get yeah. to where you really want to be it's also protecting you right like i think parents try to protect you from that's a lot of heartache too. Like if, and, and like in, not insecurity, but I think it can take a toll on your like self esteem, right? If you're going in, if say an actor, right, you're going in front and you're trying to test for this acting role, test for this acting role, and then thirty, forty times you're getting rejected, rejected, rejected. Yeah. Eventually, it takes a toll on you. Thousands of times you have yeah. to get rejected. Really, thousands. Yeah, bro. Thousands. Like thousands of auditions. Yeah, dude. I Easily. I have, have not gone hundreds. There yet. I, hundreds, yeah. at least hundreds. Mm -hmm. I, I heard this one. This one story. I forgot who it was. Uh, Jessica Alba I, I don't know who uh, Jennifer Somebody But yeah. they said Take that Their grandma uh, Was in the industry Or something She said it takes 47, 47 Like true auditions To get your first role 47 47 Who came up with that number uh, Yeah 47 grandma. <laughs> The grandma <laughs> Yeah Let's see How far am I <laughs> yeah. I would say it, Like I'm starting acting classes, acting classes. Uh, In like two weeks Like my first Like real acting class yeah. I did like mm. one thing At USC Um but just going out, like when I first started doing auditions uh, for my managers, uh, which I didn't even expect to be put up for things. I thought they were going to rep me for writing, but they wanted me to act and stuff. And, I was like, okay. uh, and the first few I did for them, they were like, this isn't good enough to send to casting directors. So huh. they were wow. like, we're just not going to send it out. 
So like they would give me an audition, I did the tape, and they were like, "This we're not even gonna send this out." And then that's good though. Yeah, they were like yeah. honest with me. Yeah. And then I just like that was like two years ago, and over the past two years, it's like some months there's like nothing. A lot of months there's nothing. Yeah. Now there's like it's very slow. But uh, then after maybe like a year, they were like, "Okay, this is good enough to send." Or after like two, maybe like six months, they're like, yeah. "This is good yeah. enough to send." And then like another year and a half, and it was like, "Oh, the casting team got back and they want you to do another." For another thing. It wasn't like a yes in any way, but it was sure. like, they want you to do this. I was like, so like you start to see some progress. Yeah. It's not like it's 47 and then you'll just jump in. Right, right, like, right. You can, see, you can tell it's getting better and you can tell you're getting better mm. in terms of acting auditions at least. But now I've gotten like a call back like two times from some, just that's where good, I man. got on a Zoom call with someone. But, yeah. But, Is that what you're pursuing the most right now, acting? No, I mean, that that just depends on whether auditions are happening. Which okay, is just, yeah. So right now, there's nothing happening. I'm not pursuing acting, but I just have acted in... Whenever, like, a friend is shooting a short film, yeah, they are I like, see. I'd like you to go maybe try out for this role, or I'd like to give you this role. Um, so th- that that has happened. So, is, f- uh, so I'm, is filmmaking or comedy or acting, what's, like, the, the main one that you're trying to commit to? Right now... Okay, my biggest goal is yeah. right now is I want to write for TV. So write for TV, mm-hmm. okay. That's, there like, a go. stable... You can get paid and you can, yeah. like, have, make right. a living. And, like, I am totally comfortable. I just want to, like, writing on someone else's thing. Like, just let me be in the room. So that's, like, number one. Gotcha, yeah. And then next to that is, like writing and directing my own like short films yeah. which may- maybe i can get made into features or stuff like that um so that's another like just like smaller projects right um also the st- some of the longer stuff i'm writing i'm getting like man like my managers are passing around so um like a f- like features feature writing is cool as well but that starts you have to write a sh- like a short film with proof yeah. of concept mm-hmm. then there's like so there's like making films the filmmaking right maybe number two like stand up, I haven't done in a bit actually. Oh, okay. Because I've been and neither and I haven't been making the TikToks either in like a year and a half. Oh, because wow. that was just taking up too much time. These other things are like real skills that I mean everything's a real skill, but this was is a skill you need to take a long time to like work oh. on. Mm. Like writing, writing a movie, writing a TV pilot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That takes that took me a whole year to like finish a pilot, like a draft where I my managers were like, "This is good to start sending around." Yeah. So I just had to stop. And also I was getting a little I didn't want to make the videos anymore after a while. So. Kind of over it. Yeah, I was just it was just like too too much of a too much other shit was getting in the way. Like t- being on TikTok, you can say it's like about getting better at your craft, but after a while there's like <laughs> the personal fame, the like thinking like like this all reflects on who I am. And then my videos were also like political, so there was like a lot of like stress when it came to like I don't want to get canceled what I say and wow. people being like why are you being silent on what's happening and X Y Z people would say that yeah like I built up an audience of people who like loved what I was doing but yeah. then when I stopped making videos they were like you motherfucker <laughs> like <laughs> the people of Gaza need you <laughs> they were like so upset <laughs> and I was like they need me <laughs> like what do you mean they need me but which I, I started, you did make stuff on Israel and Palestine. I did yeah. I, in 2021, like when there was an, right. another flare up. Right. Obviously, what's happening now is like the worst <laughs> ever. But that back then it was like it was also tense. Like <laughs> if if you can remember, there were people like losing friends. You know, like being like posting about like if you uh, think Zionism is bad, you're a piece of shit. And so I was like, if I say anything, I'm gonna lose like half my friends. So even though my whole thing so far has been having takes on what's happening and here and here and making it funny. That was like my whole thing. Yeah. I was like explaining what's in the happening in the news but making it funny. But this was an issue where even if you try to explain it, there'll be people saying that what you said, what you thought was a fact, they're yeah. like, this is prejudice and wrong. Like there's just alternate versions of what the facts were. Right, right. Even though they're also also just like our objective facts, I feel like. But people, anyway, whatever. There's so many yeah, other yeah. things at play. Somebody will always have something to say, man. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Some random dude in the middle of Alabama will be like, "No, you're wrong." Exactly. To be, to be frank, bro, you probably should have flown out to like Israel, gone to Palestine. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. made your skit there. Yes, like on the border. They did need you. They needed me right. They there. They needed you there. I'd be like, "Stop." They did, bro. <laughs> the missiles are coming. Back. Stop. I'm an Indian American with a very important message. Yeah. <laughs> You guys don't know me, but I'm from another place. <laughs> they they not said, like us. <laughs> they said you needed me. They no. said people. They're like, who who said you needed me? They're like, oh, uh, John, <laughs> John from Alabama. The Americans. You yeah. bring up a good point though, man, because I feel like once you're in the public space, especially with political commentary, people expect you to one be consistent, 
then accurate. Yeah. And then you have to have an opinion on almost everything happening in the world. Yeah. You're just which expected, is tough. Yeah. It's tough. It's very tough. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like if that's the job somebody wants to do political commentary, but I feel like that standard shouldn't be applied to comedians because they mm. their primary objective is not to deliver you the news. They're they're gonna always cherry pick stuff that's interesting to them because that's a comedian's job because that's what makes them unique. Right. But if you're just a political commentator like Ben Shapiro, let's say, or you know Candace Owens, yeah. they they are in a profession where they basically have to have a take on almost every political yeah. issue. But that's the job they picked, and so yeah, super time intensive. Yeah, there's yes, always a lot something of research. happening. Yeah, yeah, you have to just like be on top of everything. That was a th- that was like I wasn't sure at a certain point what if I was a comedian or if I was like a journalist or like what because I was enjoying engaging with world things and I also like had done an English like I I switched to like English as my major okay. narrative studies and I was like I like I like engaging with things I like having mm-hmm. something to say but I just didn't always have something to say like that was the problem like if you don't always have something to say. But people are expecting you to now have something to mm-hmm. say every week. Yeah. Then you just start stretching yourself a little. You start like, you start then you stop putting things into your own words because you're getting then you don't have as much time to create your own opinion. So yeah. you start just like drawing from what that person said, that person said. You just like repeat shit like buzzwords. Mm. I don't. I think it's still very admirable to like have things to say, and I'm proud of the video I put out on Israel and Palestine. But since then, I've been like, I don't know. Especially I'm like, I'm like I, I need to. There's other ways to like sure. I I wrote a pilot which I think it also takes place in the Middle East like there's like a little bit there's like a mm. there's different ways to do it you don't always have yeah. to be like publicly in your face about it yeah. yeah what was the biggest video you did that got the most like engagement and stuff so that video was my biggest video on uh, TikTok the Israel Palestine oh video. interesting it got like six point five million views mm. but then my biggest video on Instagram was this one about the Indian farmers protests. Do you remember when that was? You ever remember? It was like twenty twenty one. Is that in the Punjab area? Yeah. yeah. Yes. In like also twenty twenty one, there was like a right. There was like a law that it was. I don't know why I felt like making a video on. I think the people were ta- asking me to research it, uh-huh. and I was like, "What was it? What was the problem that you addressed?" The problem I addressed. What was the problem I addressed? The the farmers in Punjab uh-huh. or farmers in India were selling their crops at markets that the government ran where it was like guaranteed you would get a certain price mm-hmm. okay for these crops but then the government changed the rule where now you don't have to go through those markets you can just pay, sell to like a private company for whatever they want to pay i don't know if i watch my own video i'll probably yeah. i'll probably yeah. see, get it explained way better that i, I already forget a lot but of the small like uh, probably what ha- was happening was just the, the farmers the small farmers were getting screwed over because these companies could just make up whatever price they wanted yeah, instead yeah. of a standard price from the government they're which price gouging them. yeah they're yeah, price exactly. gouging them exactly and then the, the private companies then like ended up through that whole thing buying out the mm. land of the farm like first they would make it very low but then suddenly they would like spike it spike <laughs> they would do something like that mm. I, yeah okay. so so literally price gouging yeah, so yeah. Price price gouging. Gouging. yeah. yeah. interesting which is kind of the opposite. Usually price gouging is from the supplier. But mm. the demand, they, they had, I mean, because the farmers, obviously, they're probably in a worse position than the corporations or the government there, right? So they kind of had to give in. Yeah. So usually it's the opposite, though. Price gouging is from the suppliers, but that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they made you, you didn't, you didn't, they made the, your fan base wanted you to but, have something so, to say yeah. about that. Well, it was like, I'm not like their, like, I'm not their servant. Like, I, it was, like, <laughs> I make was, a video on this. Yeah. So, like, someone, Convince my mom to go to prom with me. Yeah. <laughs> prom explained. Prom like, explained. But yeah, it, it was like, someone asked me in like December of 2020. And I was like, I had never done a global issue before. Up until then, I had done American stuff. Cause mm. 2020 was a big American year. Like it was a lot of <laughs> right. shit happening. Um, but then, so then I left it alone. But then it started to pick up traction in the news. Like Rihanna said something about it. Because okay. these people were like, pro- pro- the protests were getting bigger. Rihanna made some comment. And then the party in power, the BJP, like, like hated that she said something. And like, at one point, like a big poster of Rihanna was getting burned. Like, <laughs> In the protest, what? Like, or in the counter, like people were burning a, a pictures of Rihanna. Of Rihanna. <laughs> yeah, there was a banner of Rihanna that got burned in India during a protest, and then everyone in the world was looking for like a small moment. Maybe not everybody, but there was a huge. 
and those like moments of like where everybody converges on one thing yeah that's when the There's video hits yeah mm-hmm. those are those moments where i think everyone who that's why you have to time it well you can't right. always be saying shit about everything you have to wait till people are actually kind of listening and then you like ride that wave so i made a video in december because i felt pressured but then i didn't post it because i was like what the fuck am i doing but then when that thing happened i was like post. okay i'll just post it and it got like it got like a million views on instagram in like a day and then it just kept climbing. Mia Khalifa reposted it on her story. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, so many people were reposting it. That was the other thing that, like, kind of boosted my ego. Like, people from all... People I like, never would have thought would have... Right. I would have any connection to were, like, reposting my <laughs> videos. And when Mia Khalifa reposted my Indian farmer protest thing, I was like, where where have I come? Like, where am I? <laughs> where have I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Rihanna's a great person, though, because I didn't know that her picture was burned in India. Because recently, yeah. you know Mukesh Ambani, the richest man in yeah, India? Yeah, the wedding that's He happening? had a pre-wedding, and he paid Rihanna to perform at it. So oh, she came shit. to India to perform yeah, at his Justin son's Bieber wedding. was there, too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why well, is she a great person for that? Huh? <laughs> Why is she a some, great some, person? Like, uh, you know, people, like, burned <laughs> her photo like in people. a country, and uh, she yeah, went back. That's true. She went back. <laughs> yeah. Actually, she did get paid, so I don't for know. Bag, <laughs> yeah, right? she went for the bag, actually. How much do you think she got paid? She's a smart person. Huh? How much do you think she got paid? Uh, I think Justin Bieber got paid ten million from Mukesh Ambani to what? perform. So Rihanna probably got like what six, seven, maybe more. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Rihanna's above Justin Bieber. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think just so below. Sure. Yeah. They, by the way, the, the wedding, these pre weddings have been happening for the last like eight months. Yeah, <laughs> and the wedding hasn't happened what? yet. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, what are pre weddings? Like, I don't know. It's an Ambani term. That's yeah. Pre, yeah nobody. Do, yeah. Nobody has money to do one wedding, bro. Yeah, these yeah. guys are just like putting money up on people's faces. Holy yeah. Shit. Like some. Yeah, weddings. Like yeah. So Indian weddings are known for having lots of glitz and glam. Yeah. Pre maybe some pre events, but I guess he's just like I'm gonna make the most Indian. Indian wedding ever. The longest ever. So Justin Bieber and Rihanna were at a pre No, no, no. Rihanna did it like last year. So remember, this pre-wedding. is 2024. Oh. <laughs> and now Justin Bieber performed at another pre wedding event they had. These and have now, been pre weddings. Yeah, and now the, the wedding, wedding is actually going to happen sometime like soon. Okay. Yeah. They're fine. Wait, what's the summer. point of it though? Like, what are they doing? It's just like, uh, like just PR a party move. Just to celebrate. celebrate. Yeah, it's like making him look cool. <laughs> he has the money to do it. Like, damn. He's the richest man in Asia. Billy, I'm, in I'm like, Asia? I think it's in Asia, all of Asia. Yeah. Oh, I wow. think his net worth is probably over a hundred billion now. Yeah, he's that rich. Oh, oh, what's his name? Mukesh, Mukesh, Mukesh Ambani. Ambani. Mukesh Ambani. Okay. Yeah. Wow. His dad created Reliance, which is like the AT and T. Heard of Reliance? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So he's kind of riding his dad's wave. In a way, I guess. I mean, I'm sure he's done his own. Stuff, he's yeah. made his own I'm sure moves, he has. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he took it to the next level Under like they were dollars. nowhere close to where, where they, they are, are now okay. oh, yeah God. i have not followed yeah i, I don't know much about is the... it only in india or is it no no i think i mean their their business is like international now they, it's which like is... everything like yeah it's like one of those companies. they own reebok too i think really i think so oh shit i might i go. might be mistaken oh literally <laughs> a body do some stand up at the wedding Oh, they yeah. would never let a comedian though perform at the wedding because a comedian what? would have to trash like make fun of the situation yeah, yeah you yeah. cannot address the elephant in the room and they don't want to be roasted <laughs> like yeah, they don't want to... that'd be lit though <laughs> like yeah. roasting the richest people in roasting Asia? Justin Bieber? it'd be the last time you roast anybody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> roasting Rihanna. Oh, man. The la- what is your ultimate dream in the career of arts Career of arts. You want you want to make films. You've acted before. Yeah. You've done comedy. comedy. You're writing. You want to write for TV. Write for TV. But what's the grand plan? Do you have one, or I do you think about I it? I don't have. I don't have one. I think I like what Donald Glover has done. Mm. I feel like what he's doing is like kind of similar to what I would. That that's like a big thing to like say, but it's like I like the idea that he doesn't confine himself to okay. any one thing, and. It, I would love some kind of end game where I can do everything I want at different times, kind of like that's the goal. Huh? At one point, I can focus on because I am also a musician and like I've been working on, I haven't been working on my music all the time, but whenever I come back to it, it like slowly builds up. So I keep going to different departments and like building up my interesting stuff yeah. in that pool, yeah, then well. acting, then here. And I think that's more fun to me than staying on one thing for like 10 years. Yeah. So. It's a lot more fun, but a lot more difficult, right? A lot more difficult. Yeah. But then if you get to a stage where you're You've now built them all up to where yeah. you're really good at all of them. Then, then that's a different yeah, ball game. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever put your music out there? Or? 
No, well, I recently put out a, my uh, first like short film, which has a ton of my piano like voice memos mm. as the soundtrack to okay. it. Kind of, it's like a documentary. So I just like I made it for my. Um, I just put it out like a few months ago, but it was my capstone project for college. Oh, nice! And it was about like how to make friends with guys. That was like my thesis question. How to make friends with guys? How do you make friends with other guys? Like, how do you? What do you? What do you think? What's your thesis? Well, my the well that well it was like it was kind of a comedic thing, but it was also like mm. it became super serious by the end, where I was like, vulnerability as a man is like, the hardest thing in the world. Like, or it's not. The, I mean, it's just like super hard. It, it comes down to like. Being able to, it doesn't even have to do with men, really. It's like everybody has a yeah. problem, but men, there's many different ways in which we've been like socialized. There's like homophobia. You know, there's a lot of ways we've been socialized to not try to get too close with other men. But personally, it has come down to like uh, letting people see, like letting people see parts of you. Mm. That's really what I think the simplest way of putting it, because that's just like scary as fuck sometimes. So. So I, being vulnerable, kind of. Yeah, just others? being vulnerable. Like, like there's moments I've had since making that project. Yeah. Where I have found myself like getting close to another man. Yeah. Like in conversation, and even though I'm literally that guy, like I tell people about this project. Yeah. Uh, I still am like terrified. It's like making a project doesn't mean you. What do you mean terrified? Like, what do you? Like, he'll start saying something. Okay. And I have an in I have an authentic reaction to what he's saying. Yeah. But that's not what I show on my face. There's like a there's like a wall. There's like something happens. Mm. I start to like it depends. Like maybe he says something I really agree with and I want to just like like just smile and be like, Yes, like I agree, you know? Yeah. And make eye contact with him. But then something inside me tells me to like not do that so like i'll just have all these interesting okay yeah i just have all these different ways of avoiding making letting someone know that i have um resonated with what they said kind of it's like you're it feels to me like you're giving something up when you do that what are you giving up i don't know like some sense of power Mm. or like you're, you're like by basically by like being a mystery, yeah, you maintain a little bit of like status, kind of, you okay. know, like you're saying, like yeah, you want yeah, to be that yeah. guy who like, you know, so yeah. like, if someone says something and you're like, I 100 percent get that, and I don't know how to describe it. There's and it's different for every person. Sure, like, I'm someone who I'll talk a lot. That's one thing I do when I'm super nervous. I'll talk. I'll just keep talking and talking. And someone will be like, I get that. I get And I'll be like, and I'll be like yeah, yeah. And I'll just keep, keep going. going. I won't let them finish my sentence. I won't let them. I won't acknowledge that they might have had the same experience as me. Yeah. So sometimes the scariest thing is to just stop talking and just be like, like to actually let, like let what I said, just like sit. Yeah. Mm. And then like, see what they say or like, you wow. Know, or to show them a smile. That's mm. another thing sometimes, or to look them in the eye. A lot of the time I'll look, look at the ground because i'm just scared of what okay. happens if i look at someone in the eye so i don't know if that how I, t- I no i now i understand that. I, how i take it is like when i'm trying to make a friend i guess with another dude or not even that i'm trying to it just if there's some relatability and then it just i think that's just a natural flow of things yeah right? if you guys hang i mean if you guys get along or i don't know if i get along but if i'm having a conversation with a dude i never met before and we just like, agree on some things we're like oh and then shit will just bounce back and forth but i mean that's interesting, bro. Cause I, yeah, I think I know what you're talking. I don't know if I've ever done that, mm. but did, did you guys yeah. have like best friends in like middle school, high school, or college, or him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cause I, I like had best friends, yeah. but mm. I didn't. I've maybe only recently had friends who I tell like more vulnerable to right now. Yeah, just things that are like going wrong in my life. Yeah, yeah. Like, people who I thought were my best friends in yeah. high school, who I'm still close with. I through that entire time never told them anything that was that I felt upset about or sad about or like. Okay, I, I think that's different. Yeah. That's a different point though, right? Than being like uh, kind of standoffish with the person if you're meeting them. Yeah, I think. The, I see what you mean. Yeah, I think I, mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but tell yeah. me, I th- if, is what you're saying is when you are in a friendship with another person, like let's say a guy, which yeah. in this case it is, because you're we're analyzing how to yeah, make friends yeah. with guys. You don't want the other person to th- judge you so you just don't want to share with them all the things that are going wrong in your life or like the things that are making you uncomfortable and so all you guys ever just talk about is just stuff that 
yeah, sure, it's important, but it's not like the stuff that you wanted to talk about in the moment because yes. you were feeling a different type of way because of what was going on in your life. And that part was never, you know, at the forefront of your relationship with this other person. Yeah, it was like, it was pretty much that. It was like yeah. not wanting to be judged, also not wanting to be a burden. Sure. Like, mm. The people who I lived with in college for like all four years. Yeah. Um, or like, and then I had another year solo after that. Um, we never, like, ever told each other what was like going on in our lives. Like, we like it was like we were all trying to be super chill the whole time. We were all just trying to be chill. Okay. And it was like, and it was chill. It was very chill. Yeah. But then later, I would just learn things, and like one guy's dad died. Like, like one guy's. And you guys didn't know. He didn't tell you. He didn't tell. He, it happened like right after graduation, but he had been sick through most of. You know, it's called shit. one guy got kicked out of his house, like, and was living in his car. And he kind of mentioned that, like, around like the summer before, like, his senior year, like, yeah, I was spending my like summer in my car. And we're like, ah, oh. <laughs> we just like, oh shit, went back to like FIFA, like, because we had no way of knowing whether it would be okay to prod more in that direction, because that was like maybe the heaviest thing. It was so heavy that it kind of came out. But even the lighter stuff, we yeah. would never engage with so how the fuck are we going to engage with that like we're just going to be like hmm. then sometimes we'll be like then we just get super drunk together that's all we that was the only bonding activity we had was getting super drunk together and maybe someone's like real feelings will kind of come out when they're super interesting drunk. okay yeah. so something i've wondered about because I, I think i've talked to people kind of like that or like like maybe i'm addressing something and there's no reaction at all Mm -hmm. And so you're saying that it's because like a fear of vulnerability or like relatability. Thousand percent. Yeah. I've actually wondered that. So that's a good point. So you've you've wondered why people don't have reactions to things you say. Yeah. And you assume what what did you think was happening? Or like what like what did you what was your I just thought they were being a dick. Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. I just thought they were being a dick and I'm like or or like maybe after like maybe psychoanalyst maybe they didn't have any similar similar like experiences or they have no interest in relating to me or an interest in hearing about what I had to say. Nothing super deep, right? Because yeah, you yeah. test the waters before you say something completely. But that's an interesting... I Personally, man, I don't think I... If somebody says something like that, dude, I'm going to react. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, whether good or bad, my reaction is going to come that's out. super but, healthy. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That's interesting. How are you like that? How are we, so uh -huh. me so our friend group is me him and Jenish yeah, it's okay. the three of us went to high school it. together and okay. like we're each other's best friends but I feel like we're kind of vulnerable you definitely he's definitely the most vulnerable I'm, like he is the I'm most very trans because I trust them the <laughs> my thing is I have like t in my opinion like not my opinion but how I see things is I have like circles of trust right basically right and then I have a small circle and then it kind of grows depending on who you are in my life right yeah and so they're closer to like the more it, not. Well, not like my family family right but like the next so there's some things obviously i don't share but i feel very comfortable with them and so i'm like very transparent because i don't think they're gonna dog on me you know what i'm saying i don't think they're gonna be like oh you fucking idiot for yeah. something or or like you know talk shit if i had a breakup or stuff like that right so yeah i share because i have you know close proximity to them mm -hmm. um but i do notice that they're more hesitant to say things Whoa. yeah and we've recently i think recently he's been more like inclined to talk recently but not not still not like that but <laughs> yeah still not like like he's no, still a dick but no not, he's not a dick yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but like about his own stuff not so not as much as me um and also i think the way i grew up too because i have a lot of cousins and we're all very close mm. and we've all had like extensive issues within our family so um talking about things that are happening within our family is normal Okay, if that makes sense. So that that's definitely probably, is probably where yeah. it comes from. That's probably where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I think how you were raised, like your relationship with your parents. Yeah. Like, um, I think it all affects everything. I mean, I don't know. If, do you have a family where a lot was a lot was shared or? I so I share like everything with my parents. Yeah. For the most, like they know everything. Like my mom especially knows every single.